What's up guys? Welcome back to Security Guard Command. So I was just remembering uh, when I first got was getting into security, I had I had, had a couple of years of experience by this point just being an in-house security guard slash bouncer at a nightclub. That was how I got into security in the first place. I just walked up to a to the to the club, saw the guy at the front door who happened to be the uh, supervisor, uh, the head bouncer said, hey, how can I get a job here I'm doing security? And he asked me a few questions, says, uh, when can, can you start next Friday? And I said, sure. So I started that and uh, learned a lot of things, gained a lot of valuable uh, experiences. So I had done that for about maybe a year or two. And then uh, an opportunity came up. And back then, um, there was no guard card. Uh, for this type of job at the nightclub there, there was just it was just that, that kind of stuff was just starting to come around uh, but the opportunity came up to get um, get a guard card without having to pay anything and it would be a, um, <clears throat> that would be my compensation for working a gig so this company down in Southern California Los Angeles was looking for a huge number of guards for this huge event uh, down in Pico Rivera it was a, it was a Mexican um, bullfighting show with, with a, an, an artist that was singing, and um, so they they were trying to attract uh, people to fill to basically put bodies in there to, to with uniforms to guard the place, and uh, well, the reason they were trying to guard so heavily was that the singer the performer of the show essentially had a had a <clears throat> he had a mark on him for with the cartel. And they, and they had already got the cartel had already gotten his uh, his sons, and so he was next. So, but we we didn't we didn't know this when we first you know agreed to do this this gig. Uh, we were told this at the huddle, the, the debrief, at the the day of the the event. Um, so it is what it is. You know, we were basically posted up there to to guard uh, to guard the perimeter of a of a location to try to prevent the cartel from getting in and taking them out. So anyway, a um, couple days before the event, we, you know, a bunch of us went down to LA um, from all over California and um, they put us up in hotels and we, they, they sent us to a, a class where we basically watched some videos and then the instructor signed off on our guard card. And um, that was it, we had our guard card. And then we worked this event. Um, fortunately, there were there was nothing that occurred, minus a few crazy fans that tried to rush the stage, which we uh, stopped. But I mean, it was just a, you know, that was how I got my guard card back years ago. And we're talking now probably 17, 17 years ago. So. Um, that's how I got started, and you know, I, I maintained the guard card all the way up until, um, <clears throat> let's see, COVID started, or um, yeah, COVID started, and then it, when I, I ended up not working for a little while, and I, I let the guard card elapse, and so that's when I ended up redoing the whole 40 hours and starting over, which actually wasn't too bad. I enjoyed it. You know, it was good, good refresher, good uh, opportunity to just kind of you know, go through the whole course again, but, um, yeah, that was my first experience doing contract security was, uh, at this event and, um, literally nobody there spoke English. It was very difficult to communicate with anybody. A lot of pointing going on, um, just trying to direct people in a certain direction. The, the end of the night when the event was over was chaos. It, it happened to be on, uh, Let's see. I, I believe it was the. It was actually the Fourth of July. I believe um, because I remember when after the event was over, try, you know, heading home on, on the freeway and just seeing the the crazy uh, illegal fireworks shows going off over the over the in the skies of L.A. But um, yeah, that's how I got my guard card, and, and and I think I think that's a you know if 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 a company is desperate for bodies that's a great way to attract people get their you know they they're basically investing in these people to, to work for them and they they're basically paying for somebody to issue of a guard card and they and they're getting free labor essentially um, out of the deal 
So I don't know if I don't know if it would fly labor-wise nowadays, uh, but back then a lot of things went down that you know that, you know they referred to the good old days in security when a lot of things you know you could fly under the radar, you could do this or that and get away with it. But now you know they're cracking down on everything. But anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm rant. I'm just going off on random topics, but. Um, Thanks for listening to me, guys. I mean, this is part of this is keeping me awake as I drive home. You know, I, I did a, a long shift today. I did a I did, I did a extra extra shift today, so I'm I'm a little tired. So this so, so me talking and just sharing this stuff is keeping me awake. Um, pretty emotionally draining day today. I, I had um, I was. Uh, I was working with a guy who came in asking for information about his his family member that had just come in through through the ambulance bay. And as I'm talking to him, doctor walks up to him, and and uh, when I see a doctor coming out to talk to him, you know, I'm just like automatically, oh, this is not going to be good. And the doctor tries to get the get the man to go back back with him and, and with her and. Uh, the man asked, did, did, "Did my wife make it?" And the doctor just said, "No, I'm sorry, she didn't make it. She she died." And I just watched this man just crumble in front of me. You know, this guy is six foot one, big guy, and his shoulders dropped, and you could just see the life drain from his body at that moment. And so that was really hard. I mean, I I had to sit there and just choke it back. And um, so it was difficult. Um, and then I ended up having to escort his, him and his family several times back and forth uh, to the room so they could spend some time, final moments with, uh, with, the, with their family member that passed away. So a difficult, emotionally draining day today. Had several, um, several people come through the emergency room with codes coding with their family members coding or having some situation going on kids that were very sick um parents just sobbing so very difficult day to day as far as you know emotionally goes and just having to choke it back and, and keep it in and a few i'll be honest a few times i almost i almost lost it just you know um you know, one thing that, that as far as security goes, one thing that um, I notice is that you, the longer you do this job, the easier it is to start becoming calloused and you start to view people as not human anymore. And um, it's easy to fall into that. And I'll admit that even me, like sometimes um, you start to look at people as, as just subjects they're they're people that cause problems or, or what have you when you when you interact with the public and um, when you when you force yourself to look at people and see their humanity uh, and have compassion on people even even the people that are drug addicts that are high at the moment and they're causing problems um, or somebody has a, a behavioral issue or a, or a mental issue I've noticed that when you really reach out to their humanity and you and you show that you're listening to them, it goes a long way to de-escalating the situation and calming them down. A lot of people just want to be heard. They want to be treated like a human being, and and because of their situation, a lot of them are treated like they're not human anymore, and it really tears them down and it just furthers their behavior. So, just gonna throw that out there as well. Um, remember to see their humanity. And, you know, even when somebody is causing problems, remember, they're still human beings. There may be something going on that's causing that behavior. So, you know, just like, you know, I'm reminded every day with the, you know, just to, just to, just to see the humanity in people and to, and to really just, you know, hold on to, hold on to compassion. I think compassion is a huge part of security that is easy to lose after you've done this for a while. You tend to just get sick of the sick of the drama, sick of the, the BS that people bring you, and you tend to just get calloused. So remember to hold on to that that empathy, hold on to that compassion for people, because I, I, I really think that those things go a long way to 
de-escalating a situation. So anyway, I'm a few minutes from home now. Thanks for listening to me. You guys kept me awake, um, you know, making this video. So hope you guys have a good night. I will catch you later.